Snowball Spark. You want good words? Data languages. Talk real sports with a real man. Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. And now, here's the be-all, end-all, know-it-all of high school, college, and pro sports. Aaron Skinny Count with the Skinny on Sports. We're talking about practice, man. I'm the MVP. <laughs> Jared, I am your father. May the fourth be with you, Aaron. May the fourth be with you. Do sometimes you wish you had that James Earl Jones's voice, where you could just walk around and you could either say something about Luke, <laughs> or you could say like, "People will come, Ray." Yeah. That's what I want it for. Yeah. People that, just will come. to just to recite that speech from They'll come dreams. to Iowa. Right. Without that, a care of the world. Yes. They won't even know why they're coming. It is May the fourth. It's uh you know, it's it's uh how do you say this? It's one of our one of our uh our colleagues, our boss is on the downhill slide today. Oh. Right. He did, he and, he did what the king would always say. He's hung half a hundred on him. <laughs> That's true. Gabriel, happy birthday, Gabriel! Half a hundred. Five o. Fifty. At what point does he shave that stash? Is it now? Was that the bet? He had to have it till he turned fifty. Is he stashless? I don't recall. I don't recall. But you know how many questions I've had to answer about that. <laughs> hey, Jared. Uh, hey. What's with Gabe's mustache? You know what he should have done. Looking back <laughs> okay, on this, looks good <laughs> in this time of of stash. He should have bought a Detroit Tigers hat. Why is that? Wore it around like Magnum PI with that stash, and uh, in a in a Hawaiian yes, shirt. Exactly. Maybe that's what he's going for. Maybe he's getting ready for the summer. Getting ready for um. He'd have to, in order to make look. it to pull it completely off, he'd have to dye that thing jet black. Yep. Not a lot of people can pull off a mustache. But no. He's doing are we it. Cert- are we certain he is? It looks better on him than a lot of people, I'll tell you that. Remember your statement at the opening. He is our boss, so I'm going to say yes. You're going to say he's pulling it off. <laughs> he's pulling it he's off He's pulling nicely. off. It looks better on him than it would on me, I, I promise you that. I that, and I've tried the stash look, and I just Have get, you? I get laughed at. I yeah, look, I just, I'm trying to view get, you with the stash right now. I get right laughed now. at. It doesn't look right. It, it looks, no. I look like I'm the president of... Uh, or I'm a, I don't want to go there. I look like a creeper. Been, I might have Are you going to say? Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know what? Uh, I look like something convicted. I, yeah. <laughs> I can remember as a kid, I don't know, seven, eight, nine years old yeah. or so, the Chuckster always had a stash my whole life, well, growing up. Yeah. I, and so I remember the mom and dad picking me and maybe uh, I could have I been like 10 or 11. Because my sister might have been there. Ashley might have been there. Anyway, or was in the car. Anyhow, so they come pick us up from a church event. And mom is driving, and there's this weird dude in the front seat of the passenger side of the vehicle, right? I'm like, who in the world? What is going on? Who is this weird man in the front seat of the car? And why is dad not here? I mean, I had these questions, and we got about halfway home, and he spoke, and I was like, holy cow, that's <laughs> Chuck. <laughs> I'd never seen him before, that, and I didn't even recognize him. Yeah, my my pop, own father. Yeah, my pop's My had, own father. He, he's always had facial hair. My dad's always had facial hair, always, except for one time. One time, he had to shave it off. I won't get too much into it. It was a medical thing, but he had to shave off, and I hardly recognized him. And at this point, I was in college. I was like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. It's the first time in my life. I'm yeah. in my 20s, and I've never seen mm-hmm. him without facial. That was the first time. First time. On the text line, we've got less than 1% of the population can pull off a mustache. And It's a rare company if you can. And examples. Yeah. And this is true. There, There is a man, no doubt, has pulled off a mustache for many years. Coach Danny McClure. That's a good one. He pulls it off he easily. Does. Easily. There's a swagger about it. 
it's not just about wearing or growing and, and, and supporting the mustache. It's how you carry yourself when you do. Yeah, you got you kind of have you know? to have a little different. And Coach McClure, attitude. I've seen him walk around I'm like, yeah, this is me and this is my mustache. That's true. That's a good one. That's yeah, a good one. No doubt about it. You he's mentioned Magnum PI there. Tom Selleck. Tom Selleck. Pretty much anything he's ever been in, he's always had that mustache. You know, because you, you think probably about probably in his contract, it's like, listen, I'll do this movie, but I'm not shaving this mustache. What's the show he's on? Blue Bloods. Yeah, I think yeah. that's right. He was on Friends for a while. Yeah. He pulls it off. What are what are some other famous mustaches in sports, maybe? I was thinking Wasn't there one right now? There's a picture for um either the Mets or the Dodgers. I can't remember. Well, I was just sitting here thinking like you think about uh, Tombstone. Oh oh yeah. yeah. Kurt Russell didn't pull it off. It looked ridiculous. <laughs> Sam Elliott. Sam oh, Elliott can pull yeah. off the stash. He can. Val, eh, his character was cool enough to where, he, you know, it, what, what's, was it Johnny? Well, bye. He, yeah. he pulled it off. Yeah. There's a lot, you know, Randy Johnson sported one. Yeah, here's one. Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. Keith Hernandez. Yes. Catfish Hunter and Goose Gossage on the text line. Yes, absolutely. I, you know what? Uh, side note. Rado Rivera. <laughs> I actually uh, got to quail hunt with Goose Gossage back in the day. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Back when there were quail around. In the, I don't know, there was a baseball card show at Woodward. He came back. Grandpa. Did, there was quail hunting going on. How about, remember, <laughs> uh, remember Landry Jones would support that mustache? Yeah, that didn't work. <laughs> Here's one. You can see if you remember this name. Rod Beck. Remember him? Rod Beck. He was closer for like the Giants in the early nineties. Oh yeah, he had the full handlebar thing going on. Am I right? He had a big old stash. Raleigh Fingers. That's another good one. You know who good pulled one. it off as well in the movies? Who's that? Uh Apollo Creed. Yeah. It was a good it was a good stash. Michael Cooper. Remember Michael Cooper of the Showtime Lakers? No. Seemed like he'd have a stash every now and then. Never, the tall white socks, Michael Cooper. Donnie Baseball. Well, we got a lots. We got lots of stashes <laughs> working. Including our own Gabe Edney. So happy birthday to Gabriel. Coming up, it is May the 4th. And we're going to geek out. We're going to Star Wars geek out, Jared, at the end of the show. We're going to talk about our the fa- the best what is the best movie of the nine. Or you can go off into Thank you. Let off those. Um, yeah, I know. I'm trying to think of the word. Yeah, like Rogue One and yeah, Solo. Yeah, you can go off into those if you'd Spin like. Spinoff. Is that what? Yeah, we're there was it? a. Yeah, what was it called? It's not the episode. It's anyway. I can't remember what it's called. Oh yeah. So the best movie. What's your favorite one? What was the best character? What's your favorite character? And then most annoying character in the series. I got to look at a uh, college f- or uh, NFL way too early 2024 draft. Oh, really? Yeah, I've got some questions about that for for next year's draft. Seems pretty non dramatic for the number one pick. Well, we'll talk about it. Okay. Uh, and then also we'll recap spring sports from yesterday. Look ahead to what's going on today. Two two five nine six nine eight is the phone or the text line. That is two two five. 9698. Give us a call, shoot us a text. We can talk about any of those things or whatever else might be on your mind. Feel free to chime right in at 225 9698. If you're going to be outside the listening area, a couple ways to stay in touch with the show log on to kadsam.com or download the Paragon app. The app's got it all it's got radio, it's got the Penny News. Pick up a brand new edition of the Penny News right now at your favorite news site. Uh, your favorite, uh, what I just lost my train of thought. Newsstand. Newsstand. Golly. Thepittynews.com. You can view that online. Big Elk TV will be on the air here in a couple hours. Hour 45. First pitch between the Elks and Mount St. Mary. Game one of the 4A Baseball Regional here at Ackley Park. Come on out. It's going to be a raucous crowd. I can feel it. I know a bunch of... I know there's probably a bunch of kids right now over at the uh, intermediate school in the middle school that are hard to keep tamped down with their excitement of getting to bust out of 
school and come watch the game. I think there's going to be a bunch of those, bunch of that happening. So yeah. it'll be a fun atmosphere there at Ackley Park today. Eleven o'clock for the Elks and Mount St. Mary, Chickasha and Sulphur would be the next game, and then there's winners, there's losers. Hopefully the the uh, we'll just get it in the weather. I mean, it's great to have the rain, and we've had a bunch of it lately. We need more, but maybe not uh, just you know right here in the middle of the of the baseball. And anyway, so you can watch that on Perry or uh, sorry, Big Elk TV dot com. Skidding on Sports Facebook page is available as well. Anywhere you can find podcast. I just said Skinny on Sports Facebook page. See, I'm excited. I'm not even paying attention to what I'm doing. Skinny on Sports podcast is no. available everywhere that you can find. I put podcast. it on the Facebook page. You do, and sometimes it gets shot down for um, being mean. Mean language because it says skinny. Because skinny is yeah. offensive now. It is offensive. How are you, Jared? I'm good. Man, yesterday, that three three state title games in a row uh, in the slow pitch softball that we that we saw um, teams from Western Oklahoma get right to the cusp of bringing home the title, and then I don't know, run out of gas is the right word, or just ran into a white hot hitting team yesterday or Tuesday. It was Leedy and Hammond. Yesterday it was Canute, uh, the Trojanettes. We're able to let's see. They got a walk off home run from Kylie Smith in Game One to beat Sterling. Knocked off number two Bingeroni in Game Two. Ten is it what it was eleven to ten, then ten to eight. But then ran into Shattuck and man, that the, the first couple of innings, yeah, Lady Indians yeah. just jumped way out ahead. I think it was sixteen three through two, and they end up beating beating Canute. What nineteen to seven was the final score. But once again, another great showing for uh, for a team from out here in Western Oklahoma. Uh, it's awesome. You know, you want to get over that hump and bring home the the gold trophy. But um, that's a great showing from you mentioned Leedy and Hammond, and then there's Canute. There's a lot of good softball playing out here, whether it be slow pitch or fast pitch. And speaking with some other dads from Canute, I mean, we were all kind of in agreement. Like, that program is like a lot of them out here. They're right there. They're that close to getting over that hump and to be – because they're consistently competing at a high level with the way they schedule throughout the season, the way they play in tournaments. And, of course, by evidence of this week, uh, a lot of programs out here are, are so – I mean, Elkett's included, right there, very close. And um, I think it's sooner than later we're going to see, instead of silver trophies, we're going to start seeing some gold trophies come this way in western Oklahoma. So kudos to Coach Gillette, 30 wins, that's awesome. And um, already looking forward to the to the fall season, the fast pitch season, because that program's got something going on. Yeah, absolutely. And Shattuck was, you knew. Oh, they're good. They're, they're, they're good. fantastic. Yeah. And uh, that was always – it always felt like whoever won that, if, if it materialized, whoever won Canute Bingaroni in the semis was going to have to go through the Lady Indians in the finals. Yep. And sure enough, that's the way it transpired. And just uh, just an onslaught to start, uh, similar to what we saw in those other games uh, from Red Oak against Hammond. And then also, um, God, who beat Leedy? I can't remember. Uh, Whitesboro. From Whitesboro against Leedy as well. Uh, so, uh, But still, great season, like you said, for Coach Gillette. 30 wins is amazing number uh, to be able to be that consistent in, in the slow pitch season so uh, another good year and, and a good uh, uh, to me a really good way to wrap up a bunch of those seniors being able you know they've yeah. been very successful in a lot of different things over there uh, with with Taylor and Kylie and Jade Jade Gray yeah. really really successful uh, high school campaign for the for those uh, that trio of yeah. seniors over there at they're Canada. gonna I mean listen they're gonna be missed they they contributed a ton through their uh, varsity years there um so and i'm with you i mean those are a group i've been watching since they were kids basically and in a little bittersweet yesterday and from what i saw obviously i couldn't go but you know all the pictures and everything the looks on their faces it wasn't uh heartbreak it was content like you know we we, we represented canute and they did they represented canute in the program very well and they were happy with how they did kim harris thank you jeremy kim kenny uh uh another senior on that team yeah but again great careers great great year and um great programs for a lot of great programs out here in this area and it's i mean obviously i'm a little invested but i'm excited about this weekend because there's preseason tournaments and you could see what's coming up yeah you know talking to oh jamie mcclure yesterday he has a great daughter on a, a young one and there's a i mean just seeing it from from that level from you know those 10 year old 10 you and all the way up, everybody has a 
there's a solid commitment to playing good softball out here in Western Oklahoma. It's a fun sport. It's very popular right now. Got chance? Go out and watch it. It's a lot of fun. No doubt. Uh, also, <coughs> excuse me. State golf tournaments got uh, underway on the girls' side. I know down in two A at Bernieville, they had an hour delay to start and then a two hour delay during the round so they didn't get done mm. till the way late uh last night but they did get the round in we'll talk about that in just a second but over at weatherford at prairie west uh ada is out on top in the 4a tournament they shot a 327 six shots ahead of bishop mcginnis at 333 fort gibson's two shots back from there at 335 and third clinton uh, lady reds a 347 that puts them in fourth the elkettes are right behind there at 355 and fifth Weatherford 362 that is good enough for seventh place after the first round of the 4A girls state tournament individually uh, the best scorer from the uh, at least the I-40 group was Kat Meacham uh, senior over there at Clinton she shot an or actually I'm sorry Rachel Carruth from Weatherford shot 80 Kat Meacham 81 Addison Litke and Brett Barnett senior from Elk City shot 82 Addison's a young one from Clinton um, rounding out the scores for the Elk Catch, had an 82 from Brett Barnett. Campbell Rainey shot 86. Uh, Cameron Edney with one of her better rounds of the spring with yeah. a 92. Really good job there uh, from Cam. Uh, also, Jaden Manning, a 95. And then Kaylin Burton uh, with a 103. I, I would expect Kaylin to do a little bit better than that today uh, in her final round as a senior. On the Weatherford side, I mentioned Carruth with the 80. And I think you got to get. How about this, Jared? This is kind of an oddity, right? So, Addison. And McKinney, uh, uh, I'm sorry, Addison and McKinley Elwick are twins. Okay. They both shot 93. Ah. <laughs> That's kind of a, I saw that last night, just kind of chuckled at that. Uh, Reagan Rosencrantz, 96. And then also Emma McCurdy with a 102. Then the other Clinton scores outside of Cat and uh, Addison Litke. Grace Meacham shot an 88. Uh, da, 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 I know Riley Cummins uh, had, a, had an even 100. Which I'm sure she's she's played way better than that coming into the state tournament. So I'd imagine she would have a way better round today as well. Uh, and then Addison Newcomb rounding out the scores for Clinton at 96. Uh, so that's kind of where that sets. Uh, if you're, I, I know a lot of times when we get into these golf tournaments like this, if it's not your team, you're rooting for public. <laughs> so I bet you there's a bunch of people over there rooting for yeah. Ada to beat Bishop McGinnis uh, today. In the final round, down in two A, it's not. Hey, real, I'm sorry, real quick before we jump off four A, shout out to the four A uh, for uh, academic state champs. That's Clinton. Oh, is it really? They I, I didn't see ac- that academic state champions. So oh, fantastic! They're, they're getting it done on and off the uh, course. That's Good always job. cool to see that. Yeah, when, when teams that excel on it are able to to get it done off right. of it as well. Yeah, and now, I know Coach Lee. He's sometimes he's more proud of that than I remember in high school when they would win. The boys would win a state title. And an academic. That was, that was the boys team with Rodney mm-hmm. Skinner and, oh, yeah, he's smart and, and all those guys. He would, Coach Lee would bring that out in the Commons, the state championship trophy, and right next to it, the academic state championship trophy. Yeah, That's we never, we big, never had to worry about that. <laughs> That's a big accomplishment, though. But <laughs> a good job of those girls. Good okay. Job. Yeah. Two in two A. Listen, it's not often. Uh, I was right about two things on this show yesterday that I'm going to bring up. Turner and Turner. Turner is one of them. <laughs> Uh, looking at the scores in 2A, Turner holds a 64-shot lead after Good. after one round. Nice. 297 from Turner. And they have – here's the deal. Stella Kasky of Tishomingo is the only thing standing in their way from having the top five individuals as well. They've got the top four. J.C. Hartman, Josie Cavett, Hope Hill, and Braley Foster. And then Hadley Hill is tied with Stella Kasky at 81 for fifth. Just incredible. I mean, that is off the charts. There's a reason why they won two in a row, and obviously they're going to win three and in a row. And they're playing at Falconhead? Falconhead Resort. So I'm assuming that's their home course. I think it probably is, down because that's where they're Just at. Just Googled up on the maps right. where they're at. That has so... I'm not saying that's why they're that far ahead. That's I a, think it, it doesn't matter what course they're playing nah. on. doesn't hurt. They do that every tournament. Yeah. So 297 for Turner. They're going to be the 2A chance again for the third straight year. Tishamine goes in second at 361. Moreland third at 381. Then Oktaha at 407. Hooker's 412. Go down to Merritt at 432. I'm sure a little bit disappointing for the Oilerats yesterday. Uh, they've, they've been a team that's consistently been 
way closer to 400 than that and even dipping down into the three 390s and the 380 I think maybe once so that would be probably a disappointing score individually uh, freshman Bertie Brown from Cordell played great an 82 um, she's got a she's the the third in a long line of great golfers Heston her brother played at Southwestern Megan at Southwestern right now uh, and then Bertie's a freshman with an 82 in her first uh, state tournament round great job by her uh, yesterday, let's see, down to the Merritt Oilerettes. Uh, Madison Robinson with a 102. Bentley Whitson shot a 103. Uh, let me make sure I'm not skipping anybody here. Uh, Miley Flowers, a 113. Peyton Broadbent, a 114. And then Mia Shepard with 125. Uh, rounds out the scores for Merritt. Uh, Mangum was there. Uh, Caselyn Brignan, uh, 139. Uh, Kiara McGill with a 116. Man, Asumi Sakikabara, 108. Ashley Denton doesn't have a scorecard. And then Cassie Whetstone with a 97. Gabby Clanton, uh, I'm sorry, Gabby Clayton, individual Burns Flatdale City, shot 96. That's a good round for her. Yeah, that kind of rounds it out. So there you go. That is the first round of the girls' state tournament. Interesting that Harley Schof from Shattuck qualified individually, but she was not there yesterday. Oh, I wonder what's going on. She was playing softball. Uh, well, makes sense. Yeah, she, uh, I, I know. I just I remembered her name from last week at the regional. And then I, when I was checking the score against Canute, I saw her in like left field, and I was like, "Oh, she's not playing golf a bit." Those dang obviously. multi-sport stars. <laughs> yeah. uh, so that's uh, that's a rundown. Pick a lane, come on. It's a rundown of the state golf tournaments. Uh, those final rounds will be played today, uh, four eight Weatherford. You can check out updates, BigElkTV.com, video and, and some scoring updates throughout the day uh, with Gabe. Those will probably start maybe a preview at ten, and then really get going by eleven o'clock uh with some with some updates there in from the uh, 4a girls state tournament also today jared here in about an hour and a half you and i over at ackley park for the 4a boys uh baseball regional i don't guess you have to say boys that's kind of redundant but anyway 4a baseball regional at elk city the big elks hosting for the second straight year they get mount st mary exactly their same opponent a year ago in the first round of the regional tournament i have a feeling it'd be a little bit more difficult this time than it was last year. Last year, a ten nothing win to start that regional. I don't think it'll be quite so easy this uh, this morning for the Elks. Uh, but <clears throat> interesting that the Mount St. Mary, the last team uh, to knock off the Big Elks, uh, Elk City comes in thirty and three, three losses, uh, six to four to Tuttle, seven to four to Westminster Christian when they were down there at Gulf Shores, and then that nine five loss against Mount St. Mary uh, three weeks ago. On a Saturday at the uh, at the Mount St. Mary Festival, be interesting uh, how much confidence that gives uh, the Rockets in this game to know that they beat the Big Elks. But I will say this: at least from the Brown and White side of things, there will be a different arm on the mound uh, this ap- or this morning for Elk City and probably for Mount St. Mary as well uh, than what was there in, the, in that first game. Sometimes beating a team. I mean, fine example was yesterday. Yeah, Canute beat Shattuck in the regular season. And then Shattuck turned around and got him yesterday. Sometimes beating a team like Mount St. Mary did to Elk City might get Elk City's attention. You know what I mean? Like, hey, boys, don't take these guys lightly. They beat you last time, and they might be a little bit more focused in. But arms on the mounds make a difference. So I think that's going to be a big difference maker today. Uh, Mount St. Mary, when you look at their results throughout the year, not only the win against the Elks, they played Tuttle twice tight in the district. 6-5 loss and a 9-4 loss. Marlowe, another really good team out of District 2. Uh, they lost in extra innings to them at 5-4. So, I mean, it, this is a solid a solid ball club, uh, and the Elks are going to have to uh, come with it right from the beginning uh, this today because the last thing you want to do is drop the first game of a regional, and then that's a long, long, yeah. long road uh, back to the state tournament. So, uh, 11 o'clock, we'll get on, what, 10 minutes before probably? Around ten fifty or so, with a little pregame. Depends get how the, quickly we can get over. Yeah, it. get the starting lineup set, and then uh, we'll be going at eleven on BigElkTV.com with the Big Elks and 
the Mount St. Mary Rockets, game one of that baseball regional, live from historic Ackley Park. When we come back, Jerry, you mentioned probably a no-brainer for the number one pick in next year's draft. But McShea, Todd McShay has a way too early mock for 2024. I've got some questions to ask you about this. All right. Ask the listener as well, 225-9698. Get your thinking cap on. Coming up this weekend, and actually I've got a programming note on this as well. But Saturday and Sunday, Butler Brothers Arena, it's the Roundup for Jesus Rodeo Weekend. Great Plains Baptist Association putting this on. Rodeo starts at 7, Saturday and Sunday. Free meal on Saturday night, May the 6th. 6 and under, got the mutton busting before at 6 p.m. Nightly big screen giveaways, nightly bicycle giveaways, and also... Programming nerd note, tomorrow at 9.30, we'll hear from Tyler McDowell. He's going to be a big, big part of Roundup for Jesus Rodeo Weekend. So we'll talk to him about this event, 9.30 tomorrow morning, right here on these airwaves. Also, we mentioned this a bunch this week, Senior Photo Contest. It's the Senior Photo Showcase from KECO. It's a simple deal. To enter, just submit your best senior photos to the online photo gallery, KECOFM.com. From there, have your friends, your family vote. The winner will be whoever receives the most votes, and that winner will receive a steak dinner at Simon's Catch. Great stuff uh, there on the KECO Senior Showcase Photo Contest. All right, Jared, we always see these way too early. A lot of times it's like top 25s for next year in college football after the, the national title game. This year, I think they started coming out with about 10 minutes to go in the first quarter because Georgia had beat down TCU so bad that, you know, that that story had been written. And so it was time to start looking ahead to next year before halftime of the finals. I I don't know if I've ever seen one of these this early, which is uh, next year's draft, a a 2024 mock draft. It's pretty early, yeah. Yeah, I don't don't remember seeing this. It's probably happened, but I, I just don't remember it. So here we go. 2024, Todd McShay has his mock draft. I want to ask you a couple of questions. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I think we have breaking news. Breaking news. I think the state baseball tournaments happening today are all pushed back a day. Okay. I wondered about that. I'm going to try to confirm this, but it looks like they're just going to wait and push everything back a day. Well, here's the thing. When you look at what's coming weather-wise, if you don't have turf like we do right here at at, uh, Ackley Park, it makes sense because of how much it's rained. Here it is. I've got it. Found it. Yep. Okay. From the OSSAA. All Class A and B baseball state tournament qual- uh, quarterfinal games scheduled for Thursday move to Friday. As of now, sites and times remain the same. Semifinals, Semifinals and, finals. and finals. Dates and times. Usually, TBD. Yeah. When this happens, it usually – Probably a Monday finish a is Monday what you're looking finish, at. finish, yeah. Which does that mean – that the brick is still available that that could change where that final would be i don't have the dodgers scheduled yeah. memorized but anyhow so that's uh we'll be looking for that for sure for uh later on this afternoon or tomorrow okay so before we get to you know the order and, and it's impossible to tell the team i mean you put a team with a name da 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 so th- mcshay and I don't know how he determined his order, maybe who he thinks is going to be good, who he thinks is going to be bad, whatever. So he's got a trade at the top with the card. He so he's got the Cardinals earning the number one pick, and then Tampa trading with Arizona. Question one: If you're a team with the, let's say like Houston. Just drafted a young quarterback. Just drafted Will Anderson. Could it be, I mean, a treasure trade? Could they still, even though they drafted their young quarterback, could it still be a situation where you'd want to tank? And here's why. I got this on the on my text, and, and I could not agree with this more. Because of who everybody knows or suspects will be the number one overall pick, Caleb Williams. Would it behoove the Houston Texans? Well, I guess they don't have their pick, so they can't do this. But if you're a team with a young quarterback and Arizona would fit this bill with Kyler, be horrible, get the one pick, and then see what you could get for it. Like tanking, but you already have – not tanking for Caleb, tanking for the treasure trove of picks 
somebody might give you in order to, mm. to come up and get Caleb Williams. Interesting concept. Like Carolina. Like Carolina got Bryce Young. Yeah. What if they're just terrible? But then they can trade out of the one and get who knows how many first-round picks for somebody that's desperate, and they've got Tampa here to McShay does to get Caleb Williams next year. That, that's interesting. Interesting approach to it. I think it the it would be more of okay, who whoever that may be, Carolina, Houston, is there somebody in this upcoming draft that you're willing to do that for? Knowing you know, not Caleb Williams, but go, okay, we can get a you know, is it just about building draft capital or is it about going after somebody else that we're not thinking about? Oh, I think it's Caleb. I mean Well, no, I mean Houston doesn't need Caleb. They don't want to get Caleb. Right. Neither does Carolina. My question is, is there someone else in this draft they're willing to do all that tanking for and, and build up that – are you talking about a lot of first-round draft picks for the – not next year's draft, but years after? Yeah, just whatever like, somebody will give you to get Caleb Williams. Just, just – yeah. And possibly. I mean, you, th- that, that pick is going to be so valuable that if you – I mean, I, I wonder if you're Carolina, you get to see Bryce. If you're Houston – I realize they don't have their pick, but if you're Houston, if you're the Colts, you see Anthony Richardson for a year. Is he going to be so – is it going to be – how hard is it going to be for them just to give up on their pick they made this year if they're bad? Or do they or do they trust what they did, be willing not to draft Caleb Williams, number one, for what they're going to get back? You see what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. That's a good question. I don't know. I, I, I be, have no – I mean – It would be really hard for okay. me – It. As much as I can't stand his face, Caleb Williams, but it'd be hard for me to have the number one pick and say, "Ah, oh, we don't need it," and let him and buy, try to trade it. Yeah. Go. Well, if you're okay, well, if you just trade who you have. If you're what, Arizona, yeah, and you get the number one overall pick, what do you do? I'm trading Kyler Murray. I mean, you might would want to. Hundred percent. And you'd certainly want to get off of that money that you're going to owe Kyler Murray. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a. I mean, it, it, it's going to. It's going to get nauseating for Sooner fans, the the drama or, or the the build up to this, because he is the the most coveted number one pick since who? With the most punchable face since who? I mean, it's been a long time since there's a guy that everybody, you know what I'm saying? Like yeah. the build up, and then it happened. Gosh, who would that be? I mean, Lawrence. I, I think the there's always. Yeah. I mean, Lawrence is the guy. Trevor Lawrence was one. When he stepped in and took over the starting role, there's immediately that talk. Yeah. This guy's a surefire number one guy. Right. There was. There's that talk. Luck. Andrew Luck. Yeah. You know, some, yeah, you really have to you just stay with the quarterback position because that's, I think, the that's only about hype it. that you get. That's right. You know, Peyton Manning was way back. It's way back. Yeah. But what was somebody. He, was Eli? Eli wasn't quite as. I think there was the Manning sure name, fire. but they're like, well, there's no way he'd be good as Peyton. But some, he's, there was he's some a first-round guy, but he turned out to be pretty dang good. And I'll say this, depending on how good Drake May becomes and how you know from North Carolina, another thing that Caleb's got at least right now is he's kind of the show in town at quarterback, and, and unless Drake May continues. A lot of people think he will. But if Drake May goes Sam Howell, just to compare North Carolina quarterbacks, you know – and, Eli and, and, was number one. Remember, the Chargers got him. That's right, they and they traded, traded him. him. But there was also Rivers. There was also Roethlisberger in that same draft. What, what I'm saying is Caleb could be the – I mean, he's going to be the undisputed number one overall pick. But if there's no fallback options, it's going to make that even more coveted. I mean, is there any chance he's not outside of injury? No. I, I could not agree. Who would challenge him? I, Who's going to just suddenly, Drake May is the only one that seems like at least right now would have any chance to challenge him because of the importance of the position. Mm-hmm. Now I'll ask you another question well, here. Let's, in a second. let's go back to your original question of what if it's a team like you said who doesn't need a quarterback but they value somebody else. Like, listen, I, we don't need him, but we sure need we need help at wide receiver. Yeah, I know, but uh, yeah, it's, it's hard too, to see a wide receiver go number one. But you see my point? Here? No, I understand, but I, I think that pick is going to be too valuable not to trade it. Yeah. I mean, because there's a guy – I'm going to ask this question in a second. That I, I think you can – I think there's one guy out there that maybe isn't, but you could at least 
try to make an argument that he might be the best player. That and he's not a quarterback. Guess who has the most first rounders in this mock draft, school wise? It's gonna be a team I hate, either USC or Texas. No. Who is it? Ohio State. Oh well, that's believable. We got like yeah. six or seven. I think it was six or seven that I counted uh, coming into this year. That's a big reason why they're such. I mean, when we talked about the FPI, and they were the favorite ahead of Bama, ahead of Georgia, ahead of everybody. I think maybe now we're getting a glimpse as to why, with the projected first rounders they've got on both sides of the football coming back this year. The one question mark would be for them, they don't have the quarterback. C.J. Stroud isn't going to be the guy since he got drafted. Is there somebody that you think, you're mentioning if you don't need a quarterback, is there somebody you think could be worthy of at least a conversation at the one pick if you have a quarterback? If you have a quarterback. Yes. And if there is, who would it be? Just looking at this mock, the, and we we'll kind of go back to that conversation we had about schools that continue to produce high-level talent. Why not like Dallas Turner? You know, what if he comes out and wins the Butkus at, from Alabama, outside linebacker from Alabama? I'm just kind of, I'm really leaning on this mock draft mm-hmm. because I don't know any of these. I don't haven't even looked this far ahead yet. What about a guy like that? You know, what if he comes out a blazing and just dominant? Think, think um, from Ohio State at Washington now. Oh, Chase Young. Think Chase Young. What if he comes out and just completely – and Sue dominant player, and everyone goes, whoa, this guy is surefire, can't miss. We don't need a quarterback. Go get that guy. I think it's possible. Uh, but because of the position he plays with that kind of a rush outside linebacker type guy. But once again, I just – I, I – I just can't see it because of what you can get. But he makes sense. And two other guys that make sense to me, one at a position that is not valuable enough, but he's is Brock Bowers, tied in from Georgia. That dude is unbelievable. And the other is Marvin, uh, Marvin Harrison, Jr., uh, from Ohio State. Those, but, but once again, I just – for teams that don't have a quarterback – they just have to do that. You know what I'm saying? They just they're gonna have to get that king's ransom for for I'm mean, sorry for somebody that does mm-hmm. because I just think that pick is gonna be so 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 valuable with teams wanting Caleb Williams. The Cardinals are set up, man. If they could just suck again this year, they have Houston's pick. Wait a minute. No, they have, yeah, they have, they have their own pick at two. Do they have? Yeah, that. Yeah, no, no, no. Wait a minute. With the, in the Hopkins trade, I'm trying to think. Yeah, well, they they no, they traded they up. Never mind. Traded. They, yeah, they that traded. Sense. They traded down with Houston this year. They traded down from three to twelve, and then they traded back up to six to get the offensive lineman. Let's see here. I'm looking it up. Yeah, I'm trying to look. Okay, so they, they've okay, got – Okay, here's what they ended up with for 2024. They have Houston, Texas first round. Okay, that's – they still – They're third round, Titans third round, Eagles fifth round. And that's not counting whatever they get in the first round okay. on their own, right? No, they so traded they, their own. That's what they that's did. That's gone. They, they traded that gotcha. to move back up. Okay, so they still have – they kept Houston's – which they traded from 3 to 12. And then they traded back up to 6 to get the offensive lineman from Ohio State in this draft. But they used their own pick to trade up and not Houston. So they still have their pick and Houston's pick for next year. God, if they could stink with with Murray and then what they could get, Arizona could have a chance to really, really do some good. But they're going to have to not be very good again this year. All right. I mentioned Marvin Harrison Jr., can you think of a school that has had a run at any position like what Ohio State is in the middle of with with uh, wide receivers? Well, why not OU and offensive line? Well, I wouldn't. I, I would say OU with quarterbacks having back to back number that's, ones. That's a good one. And too. a second round. That's a good one too. But think of the amount of dudes that have come through there in the last two two or three drafts, and then this one coming up, which they have two first rounders in at the wide receiver position. 
you know, and and Jamison Williams for, ended up from Alabama was there too, mm-hmm. with the, with Olave and Wilson, and I know I'm going to it's Smith and Jigba. These two guys this year with Harrison and uh, uh, what's the other guy's name? Uh, Egbuka, Emeka Egbuka. It's been an incredible run of wide receiver recruiting and development from the Ohio State. Yes, it is. I mean, just unreal. Yeah. Six, seven guys in three drafts going in the first round at that position. Uh, no OU or OSU players at the moment in this first round mock draft. And no shock. Who there. could it be? Let's uh, let's because I don't. I think if we'd have been talking about this a year ago, mm-hmm. I don't know that either one of us would have said, you know what, I think's going to happen. I think Anton Harrison's going to be a first True. rounder. True. So at least right now, there's not, and for good reason. But is there somebody on either squad that you could go? You know what? If he develops or continues to develop, this guy could end up being a first round draft pick. Man, I the the offensive line that's got to show me something at OU. It's nothing standing out to me there. Maybe ah, no, I don't want to go there either because the tight end position is so stacked. I don't know if anyone would would uh, take a chance on Stogner in the first round. I'm not too sure, man. I just it's hard for me to see OU or OSU. Do you have a name? I do. Throw it at me. Billy Bowman. Billy Bowman, okay. What if Billy Bowman is able to unleash the athleticism that we that that we feel like is there? Okay. Yeah, this is good. The, the answer is probably Guyton on the offensive line. Tyler Guyton. Mm-hmm. The transfer from TCU last year. I think that's where you got to start. It's probably him, but I, I'm Bowman seems like a guy that is is poised and ready to just break out. He kind of started that, and then he got hurt last year and, and missed, you know, the middle to the end of the season. Came back, and, and you, I, w- I would just go with him you on know, the OU I'm, side. I'm of things. surprised you didn't go because you've always described this guy as as a guy that looks like Woody. Woody, Washington. I'm over Woody, man. It's just not <laughs> happening, man. If this had been last year. That's exactly who I would have said, but. Woody's not going to be a first round draft pick, and he does. He literally looks the part, and, and maybe I'm a little bit prisoner of of looking the part with Bowman, but that's who I would say. Uh, but yeah, Smithy's right. It's Guyton. Tyler Guyton um, is probably the guy. When if somebody can make that jump, that is a good one. Probably is that guy at OSU. Maybe one of those receivers, if they could break out because they've got a ton of them. You know, is it is a Jaden Bray? Not healthy at all last year. Could he, you know, become the man there at the receiver position? Offensive, defensive line. I mean, uh, oh, no, wait a minute. I've got it. Oh, shoes is easy. Colin Oliver. Yeah. Colin Oliver is absolutely the guy. He might be the, he might have the best chance of anybody on either side. Mm -hmm. If he'll actually let him play. The way that he's able to rush the passer, and that's something that's so coveted in the NFL. Yeah, Colin Oliver might be the best chance of anybody on either side. Very good one. With the breakout. That's, that should have been obvious to me. Yeah, I know. I've, well, heck, they didn't let him play so much. Last year, it's hard to remember he's out there. Right. All right, that's fun. Way too early. 2024 mock draft. I want to try to remember to screenshot this or save this and then see what it actually ends up. Yeah. See how good McShay is at this 12 months away. <laughs> the Skinny on Sport. We've got too far. There's too much to lose. We've got to just keep our composure. That is actual audio of J-Mac in the batting barn. <laughs> right now. I, when I was over there trying to get uh, get ahead and set up, I was hearing that. I was like, what is going on over there? It's cleaned it up <laughs> a little bit. I like it. We'll be there. Big Elk TV, 11 o'clock. Big Elks and the Mount St. Mary Rockets. First game of this 4A regional at Ackley Park. All right, Jared. It is May the 4th. So may the 4th be with you. Thank you. Appreciate that. We're both Star Wars geeks. We both admit it. We're both fine with it. Although I'm a little ashamed. I haven't watched season three of The Mandalorian yet. 
I haven't watched any of that. You really need to. I've heard it's great. Okay. Of the Star Wars franchise, what is the best movie? It's Rogue One, hands down. Rogue One. Great movie. Rogue One is awesome. Uh, it's a great movie. You know how I knew it was awesome? As I was getting involved in the characters, not thinking about what was happening. I was so enthralled with what was going on. And then right before the last battle, I thought to myself, they're all going to die. Yeah, you realize. I, like, but I didn't, but yeah. I didn't really, you know what I'm saying though? I was so, the, the characters and the way the movie went, it was so good that I made it all the way until the very end and then realized, uh-oh, they're going to die. Because you remember. What happened. In the very first a 1977 new movie, she said, she she alluded to, uh, we made great sacrifice to get this info, and, and then you start to realize, oh my goodness, they're not going to get R2, out of this. R2-D2 is the only one making it out of this alive. <laughs> that was a well, well, everything about that. It was character driven, well written, well directed. The action scenes were awesome. That that last battle was like, it felt like, uh, like saving Private Ryan, but Star Wars, you know, it wasn't cheesy with the blasters and everything you're on the beach and it was cool man i i that movie hands down for me best one if the technological capabilities would be the same would it be empire strikes back well maybe and maybe not i mean you've seen george lucas come back and try to add you know special effects and stuff to those original movies much to the chagrin of fans so i don't know i empire was good it was such an epic because he got a budget that time and it was good and it too was well written i'm gonna go with empire you're going with empire yeah my favorite though i'm gonna go with uh, rogue one i love rogue one yeah it, rogue one and then of course the original or episode four right it's hard not to just if you like star wars and the way that it you know, our age especially, remembering it, it, everyone saw that one first. Yeah. Well, that's so, my favorite. Is that your favorite? Yeah. A New Hope? Yeah. That is my favorite. What? Uh, who was the best character in the series? Uh, Han Solo. Agree. We all wanted to be Han Solo. Uh, it's hard not. I mean, even, even Luke was such a little whiner for until he realized, until he became Luke Skywalker. Yeah. He was such a little whiner. And then when you, when you go back... And the first three, and Hayden Christensen was such a wine bag, especially in the third episode where he became, oh, I guess that was Anakin, but. Right. You know, and then it leads to Luke, and Luke takes on those traits where he's whining because Han's a man's man, and Han's able to get the girl. It's your sister, bro. And then he finally realizes it. And then when the new ones, he's such, I mean, it's like overblown. Mark Hamill, eh. It's obviously Han Solo. There was never a time where it was like Han isn't the coolest man in the galaxy or multiple galaxies. Yeah. He was always the best. Yeah, unpopular opinion. I know the solo, the 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 offshoot mm -hmm. film. What was his name? Aldrich something who played Han Solo. I mean a lot of people didn't like that movie. I thought he did good. I mm -hmm. thought he, he portrayed him well. He had that scoff attitude and kind of a kind of a rebel attitude. I liked it, but Han Solo, best character, hands down for me. It was just so – that guy had such a hard deal after Harrison Ford being cool. Oh, how do it you – It was tough. Yeah, it's it was hard. Tough. That's a hard role. All right, who's your favorite character? My favorite character um, – how about Boba Fett? Okay. The bounty hunter. Even though he was a bad guy and all that stuff. And they brought back his character mm -hmm. in The Mandalorian, and um, he had his own little series there. But Boba Fett. He was cool in the Clone Wars. That scene, that fight scene on mm -hmm. that on that platform when the rain, that was cool. I'm gonna go with Obi Wan. Good one. I mean, he starts out as Ben, and then he straight up tells Vader, "Strike me down. I'm gonna be more powerful than I ever would have been." And then he is. And then you go back, and he was pretty cool as a younger one. And then you see his heartbreak as he loses Anakin. To the dark side. It's a good one. I like Obi-Wan for my favorite character. 
Who's the most annoying? Easy, Jar Jar Binks, right? <laughs> you know what? I didn't like the little soccer ball either. What was it? What was he called? Um, he had a number B two three or whatever. Oh, BB eight. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah. If Jar Jar wasn't so awful, then BB eight that thing. Um, uh, my kid's got a toy, mm-hmm. and you can control it with your phone, and it looked just like him. It really? was. It had the head was stayed on by a magnet, but you controlled it. It rolled around. It was cool. It was cool. I, I didn't mind BB-8. He um, annoyed me a little bit. He annoyed you. Jar Jar's easily the answer. Yeah, it's easy. All right. Big Elk TV, 11 o'clock. Elk City and Mount St. Mary, game one of the 4A Regional. Jared and I will be there. Thanks for listening. We'll be back tomorrow. Tyler McDowell, Skinny on Sports, right here on the Sports Channel. You've been listening to the Skinny on Sports podcast with Aaron Cow. Be sure to hit that subscribe button to get alerts of when the latest podcast is available. Thanks for listening. That ball is blistered to